I played Elder Scrolls Online's newest expansion, High Isle, to see if this expansion, the ESO, was just as much fun as the last one. Another! But nothing's gonna beat the introduction of that Necromancer class to the game, though. I mean, am I right, guys? Come on. Ah, the High Isles. With a promise of a new landmass to partake in, delves to explore, treasures to find, new companions, dungeons, and volcanic event world events to partake in, I was pumped. I dusted off my copy of the game over on Steam, I reinstalled it, got for myself the expansion, and I logged into Elder Scrolls Online yet again, ready to begin another epic adventure. My plan was just like the last expansion. I was going to indulge in the game as a brand new character, as if I was a totally new player, and I just wanted to have some fun and get to level 10 in this new expansion in this new area. Would it be fun? Would it be boring? Would I become sexually attracted to an Argonian? But before I tell you all the tale of Hjolfnir the Nord Templar, what exactly is the High Isles? Let's rewind the clock a bit, shall we? Elder Scrolls Online is a game that I played at launch, and I quit, like many people did. And I returned years later to an incredible and newly polished experience. My days were filled with world PvP battles, crowning emperors, doing massive events with my streaming community. There was so much in this game to enjoy, and so I no-lifed it, consuming as much content as I could, as quickly as I could, as Jarl and Thoriel, the Eternal Emperor of Tamriel. You guys know what I'm talking about. You've seen my other YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. But then, after a few hundred hours, I got kind of burnt out on the game. Now, I love Elder Scrolls Online. I think it's a fantastic MMO. It's great for anybody looking for a new game to try out. But the reality is, I have not played it in a very long time. Not since my small expedition into the previous expansion, Blackwood, which I made a whole video about. But that was forever ago, man. And now, with the Elder Scrolls Online High Isles here, I gotta catch up on this game and see if it can hook me again like it did in the past when I gave it that second chance. And so I created Hjolfnir, a Nord Templar for this High Isle expedition, who is roleplay-wise the son of Enthoriel, my main character. All right, look, it, when you play ESO, you kind of get into the roleplay, okay? Like, it's a very roleplay-ish kind of game, what can I say? Logging into the High Isle expansion for the first time, you are immediately greeted by this handsome rogue by the name of Jakarn or whatever, who tells you to go into a nearby city in order to get the lay of the land and to get you started on your adventure. Upon going into this coastal town, I was greeted to many uh, city quests. And these are my least favorite types of quests in MMOs, if I'm going to be honest. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. Those run here and then run to this guy and then run there sort of quests that don't really involve unreasonable levels of violence. Yeah, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Those. I, I was forced to do some boring as sin quests for a bit before I found myself, well, I admit kind of bored. Like, you guys know me. I've got the spirit of Bilbo Baggins in my heart, man. I need the horizon. I need travel. I need discovery. And I needed to get out of this stink-infested town. I'm going on an adventure! So I started off from the docks towards the exit of the city, when suddenly, something happened. I noticed something creeping behind me. It was scaly. It reeked of swamp and bog ass. It was an Argonian but not just any Argonian, a spell-casting Argonian who wanted to group up with me and explore the High Isles together since he was a new player too. So why not? I thought to my Nordic self. Sure, there was a risk that he might lay eggs inside of my anus while I was sleeping, as all Argonians would do, but I'm not going to turn down a free meat shield. Besides, he might have one of those lusty Argonian maid sisters. There was just one problem. Turns out this Argonian had a bounty on his head for attacking civilians, so we both had to run out of town as quickly as possible. And so, the great adventure finally began for us both into this big open world. Hjolfnir, the mighty, the handsome, and the Argonian. Outside, we found ourselves frolicking through sunflowers together, side by side, and we killed whatever mobs we could find in order to get some free loot and some experience points. At last! Violence. On a serious note though, this is actually something that I absolutely love about Elder Scrolls Online. It's just the fact that if you want your hand held by the game, I mean, it'll hold your hand and it'll guide you around and stuff, 
but if you just want to run off and make your own adventure in whatever zone or area of your choice, you can do that too. Nothing is ever stopping you from just going off the beaten path away from the quest that you were just on and to go seek a new adventure in a cave somewhere or by fighting some random boss event that you found out in the open world. And we were doing just that, me and this Argonian guy, and we were having a great time. After a little violence and frolicking, we decided to try our hands at doing a world boss that was just outside of town. But unfortunately, we arrived too late and we discovered that the other players in the area had already killed it. But that's okay. Instead, we headed north, following one of the quests that we had in our quest logs that led us to a sort of nobleman estate complete with a swimming pool in the backyard. Now, High Isle, lore-wise, to my understanding, is meant to be a place of wealth and nobility. It's like a like a rich person retirement area. So this was a neat location to discover. The Argonian even went for a nice little swim and got all wet. We did a little questing. We stole some stuff from the house while nobody was looking. And guess what? Your boy Hilfnir got himself some mage gear and then more mage gear and more and more. Seriously, like, like, like my first however long this was of me playing the game, I didn't see a single piece of anything but like cloth wizard armor. Listen, I am a Templar. I'm not some $20 corner working wizard. The exploration of Elder Scrolls Online is one of its strongest selling points as an MMORPG, and exploring High Isles so far was an absolute treat especially finding places like hidden waterfalls and overlooks out behind and off the beaten path. The land was beautiful, and as always, the Elder Scrolls Online team had knocked the look and feel of the area out of the park. I do admit that some areas felt a little more detailed and like they took a little bit more time there than others, but that's just my opinion. Just an opinion. Overall though, the visual look of this expansion was fantastic. So many sunflowers to frolic through with the Argonian. It was kind of nice, you know? While playing Cave Explorer together, we even got to meet a big titty goth vampire girl who I was quick to try to put the moves on. Man, you smell pretty. But I got rejected. <laughs> but I did get a brand new helmet while down in the depths and I was looking badass, dude. Kinda. Helmet or no, however, I had only played a Templar once in the past, so I have to say, I was loving the class so far and the experience of it. Just being able to throw that damn light spear and like send people flying back, that was so satisfying. Like this class was amazing so far. I loved it, I was having fun. But you know, what I didn't love was just the fact that we were just kind of questing. And that's fine and all, but I really still craved that, that adventure, you know? I didn't want to just talk to these NPCs. I wanted to find something awesome and memorable about the High Isles. And that's when we found our first delve. Now, for those that don't know, a delve is like a single player dungeon in Elder Scrolls Online, complete with bosses and sometimes puzzles to discover and solve. It's a great place to get one of my favorite features of ESO, and that is pieces of set gear while you are leveling. This game is polluted with sets of gear that do various things, and you can get these sets at low level or max level, it does not matter. And I wanted my first set of gear, dude. So what are we waiting for? Let's go in and see what we get. Holy damn! Just look at this place, dude. It looked incredible. Fire and magma, giant molten salamanders, whatever the heck this thing is. We descended into this delve, seeking the treasures contained within, coming into contact with all manner of foemen and ruinous horrors. Through magic and steel, we circled the cavern. We got lost, had to retrace our steps. We both got hot and steamy down in the magma chambers. But soon, me and my Argonian, we found what we had been seeking. We encountered the delve's boss. Guys, it was a legendary battle, one straight out of an epic poem. And after it was all said and done, after we had thrown down the ruin of our enemy and had been in that delve for so long, we finally earned our reward. And you wanna know what that was? Some bullshit mage gear. And a card, because apparently High Isles has added a card game to ESO. I was a little disappointed. But outside though, mm, damn. Delicious, 
Say it with me. Say it with me. Blue heavy armor shoes. Damn, son. Look at these things. My first part of the sister's scowl set, however you pronounce it. Dude, you guys have no idea. Collecting all of these different sets while leveling an ESO is, in my opinion, the best feature of this game. I would love it if they brought things like this to games like World of Warcraft to make the leveling experience more exciting. I even made a video talking about all that and other things they should add to the damn game in the future to make the game better. Want to check that out? Right up there. Click it after this video is over. But anyway, I'm sure you're wondering what the relationship between me and this Argonian was like at this point. The Argonian and I were quickly becoming close, him telling me that I looked handsome in my new shoes. Which he, of course, was not mistaken. I, I did look handsome in my new shoes. I mean, I know. You don't got to tell me. I don't know. Like, maybe maybe Argonians weren't so bad after all. And the way that his slimy, pus-filled eyes would just catch the rays of sunlight sometimes. I just, uh, I don't know. Anyway. Soon, we were collecting Sky Shards, learning new abilities and throwing them onto our action bars. We were finding the occasional quest here and there to do for experience points, and we even discovered another delve. I was even getting gear! More gear! Finally! The Elder Scrolls Online experience was finally coming together, and to top it all off, we went back to that world boss that we tried to kill earlier in the video, and guess what? He was up, and he was there. We gathered a few people together from around the area, we grouped up, and we had another epic battle there in the High Isle, this time earning for me the second piece of my sister's set. Sistress. Sisters. It was the second piece of the set, dude. I was having the time of my life, fellas. You gotta understand, like Elder Scrolls Online had once again sucked me in and the levels were flying by way too fast in this little giving it a chance challenge. Now around this time, I did decide to switch up my combat style though. Throughout this video, you've seen me using the two-handed axe and the two-handed mace and stuff, but I decided that I wanted to try a sword and a shield because after all, those were the weapons of choice for Enthoriel, Hilfnir's father, if you remember the roleplay, yeah dude. And wouldn't you know it, right when I made this decision that I was going to change up my style, I got a blue one-handed sword. Dude, it's like the stars were aligned. Now here I was tearing through guys left and right, and the Argonian, dude, he was summoning stuff and casting his spells. We were on a roll through this freaking place. Nothing could stop the two of us. Except for this one NPC. Yeah, the Argonian got kind of stuck, so I had no choice but to kill the NPC, and then we had to flee from the scene before getting absolutely anally ravaged by the guards. We made our way into the nearby mountains to hide, seeking shelter from the bounty that we had just amassed against us, and it was there that we found another world boss. Now this time, however, it was just the two of us trying to kill him, so it didn't really go as well as the last time. We tried again, though, and again, and we gave up shortly after that third go or so, and we went to go hide in a nearby village full of druids who worshipped the movie Ferngully. We helped these hippies cleanse corruption around their town, we freed an ancient deity that they worshipped that was bound under the earth, and we exposed corruption within the village's leadership. But no spoilers. And this is when we both finally, well, did it. The Argonian and I hit level 10 together, completing my little challenge of giving High Isles a fair chance. The Argonian, he wanted to keep questing. He wanted to keep leveling throughout the night with me at his side. But I told him that I couldn't. I had to go. The challenge was over. And so, uh, and so with tears in his gills, he turned and he walked away, never to be seen again by me. And sometimes I wonder what became of him. He's probably off right now laying eggs in a dumpster or probably taking a fat black marsh shit in someone's swimming pool, but I will never forget him. <laughs> my Argonian friend. I'll never forget him. And that was the end of my adventures, fellas. And I hadn't even done everything yet. You guys are probably going to leave that comment down below. 
I didn't even get to experience the new companions in High Isles since I was grouped up the entire time with the Argonian. I never even got to check out the new in-game card game ESO just added. I didn't get to do the volcanic events, the world events that are scattered around High Isle. Damn! You know that a game is good when you finish a play session of it. And you realize, dude, there's so much more left for you to explore and do and enjoy. And that is exactly how High Isle felt for me after I gave it a chance to impress. I can safely say that I went on an adventure like Bilbo Baggins to the Lonely Mountain. And the memories that I created of Argonians and Delves, new sets of gear, quests, vampire girl titties, world bosses, and more, I will cherish in my MMO memory inventory forever. Black, fat, black marsh Argonian shit.